Hello, how are you today? It's a very important question for me because it tells me if you're good, that you're relaxed and watching me with joy. If you're bad, perhaps you're so relaxed and hoping that um, one way or the other will touch whatever that is not right within your system and get that rightened. My name is Elizabeth Abai and the program is Conversations. Today we are going to be looking at something that is imperative for all of us that is our internal organs. The skin is said to be the largest organ in the body. Yes, but that's because it is covering several other things within the system, the internal organs within the system. A lot of times we pay attention to our appearance, our look, but do you know that what you are inside has a whole lot to say about what you actually are on the outside? Well, I'm not a doctor. A whole lot of people here seated to talk about this. But the thing is, we want to look at how to love ourselves from the inside better, internal organs, and how to take care of it. And when you speak of that, we know that uh, we can't go too far without a urologist. So, for those of you who asked questions yesterday, the difference between UIT and PID, the doctor will be taking on that question. But then, let's get ourselves introduced. What's your name? My name is Enobo Robin Okereke. Okay. Kevin Fineface. Kevin Fineface. Evaristus Azodo. All right. Dr. Evaristus Azodo is a consultant urologist, and I know the clinic is a Chivas Clinic. Chivas Specialist Hospital. Specialist Hospital. All right. Now, before we begin to answer your questions from last week, we will quickly find out how men take care of themselves. And that's actually why you have two men seated in our beautiful sets. We usually like to put women, but then <laughs> we put men, you know, two of them actually today. Let's see how regularly men do, do uh, check their checkups. their medical checkup uh, I think around three to four months they should always go and check their health because uh, there are a lot of sicknesses that are on the rise like the, uh, the, the diabetes hypertitis all this those sicknesses when you are always in contact with the public you encounter them so they are diseases that must be checked and even cancer every year quarterly it should be done because you know we don't we don't know we don't know what is uh, what we what, what we have within us unless we go to 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 the clinic to do tests and checkups because if we say we should just live by what we are just seeing you know most people have this low bp high BP without even knowing, but just a little something will just trigger it. I'll see your sugar level and blood pressure, whether low or high, so basically just two things. They should go there when the need arise. As far as I'm concerned, what I do is I control what I'm eating. I control my movement. I have car, but I don't, I don't rely on car. <coughs> If I'm going a short distance, all I do is I trek. But if it's a long distance, then I carry my car. And my food, I don't eat um, all this uh, sweet, sweet, sweet food too much. I believe in this thing, natural food, more than artificial food. And God is protecting me. Supposed to be twice or thrice in a year. One should be blood pressure, BP, diabetes, hepatitis. These are the three sensitive diseases. They need to check them almost every year because they are very clean. In fact, most especially that hepatitis is a killer disease. It kills salem, so there is a need for you to check, them, to be checking your hepatitis almost two or three times a year. Three times a year. Like sugar level, heart, and exercise is very, very important. These are the key things that you can do to make sure that you are healthy all the time. 
Well, for me, they can go once in six months, and then they can go check up their sugar level, you know, post rates. Well, at least three months is what enough for medical checkup. Uh, there are various things to check up for now. There are increasing rates of um, some, some of the things we eat in the markets now that are getting affected. All these uh, condiments of uh, preserved food and the rest of them, they're having effects on us on, on the long run. So there are things we should be checking up. Like the rate of uh, prostate cancer in the, in the likes of men and the rate of uh, high blood pressure, the sugar level and the rest of them are think, are things I think one should always have inside of on a regular basis. Alright, our internal organs loving them better and there's no way you can show love rather than do a checkup and be sure that they're in order. Since you can't see them, you know, with your physical eyes, you need to go and do checkup. And I'm impressed that a lot of Nigerians uh, especially the men, we interviewed only the men, were able to tell us that they check as much as three times a year. And I'm wondering, doctor, is that over checking or under checking? <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, that, that was very interesting, but I, I'm not sure they were saying they were checking. <laughs> they were suggesting. They were recommending they, for they others. Recommending because the truth of the matter really is that um, I stand to be corrected. Mm -hmm. Men have a poor health seeking behavior. Wow. In fact, a lot of time their wives or friends have to keep pushing them to drag them to Hossa. Nigerians in general, but well, men are the worst. Because the average Nigerian, when you say, I want to go for a checkup, say these doctors, once they go, they must find something. I beg. There is no easy lie. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> say these doctors, they must find something. So, so I, I think that maybe we on our side are not doing enough education to make people realize there's a need for checkup. Let's take hypertension, for example. It's a silent killer. You'll be walking around, you know, and because we have medication available, we have a headache, you go and take Panadol. And when you finally get the person into hospital, you are shocked to find that his blood pressure is hitting the roof. I remember when I was much younger, um, about 1985, I was working in a hospital in uh, one of the states. And one of my orgas came in to, for me to find his performance of fellowship report. Well, I was in the army then, mm. and I was a captain. So this left now gonna comes in to check his, for me to fill his form. And he says, sir, well, the least I should do is take your blood pressure. It's okay. And blood pressure hit the roof, was hitting the roof. I said, I'm sorry, sir, we need to admit to you actually a walking <laughs> time bomb. He said, no, 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 I'm traveling with the GOC. As I was talking, I called my commander. I said, sir, I have so, so, and so here. This is a blood pressure. I think it should be admitted. He said, give him the phone. Like, the man went from that consulting room to admission until we got his blood pressure down. Because we're walking around. <clears throat> so, and what is the problem with that? Is as, is the, the, apart from the fact that you could get a stroke, or the person could get a stroke, a persistently high blood pressure is damaging the internal organs. And principle of which you're talking about the kidneys. And the, the kidney, kidney is the, one High organ, blood pressure affects kidney. A lot of the wow. kidney failures we have in Nigeria as secondary to high blood pressure with the brother diabetes. What? How? The brother <laughs> said diabetes. Now, it is important for you to note that the kidney is one organ. When it fails, you have to replace if you can afford to replace it because it does not repair itself. Unlike the liver, where you can lose 30% of your liver, Yes, Over, you have 30 percent left it can recover mm. yes but mm. when it feels that's gone because, oh, we, that's yeah, because the liver liver is a place that cleans out everything mm. liver and kidney do a lot of the cleaning of the body 
And the, the kidneys too, if one fails, you can function one, right? I agree. Okay. If However. One, <laughs> if, if, one, if one fails, but when you're talking about hypertension, mm. you're talking of a disease that affects the whole body, what we call systemic disease. So it's unlikely to be affecting only one kidney. So there is a need for a regular checkup. Of course, we're talking of in adult age group here. So that um, at least once a year. Okay. You should That's have, should have a full, yeah, yeah, a full once a year. At least once a year. At least once a year. It depends and also it depends on your yeah. age group. Okay. Now, in the younger people, um, 40 and below, you have different things to worry about. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, they also the groups that are more sexually active. And um, the, when we, statistically, you tend to have STIs more in that age group. That is um, sexually Which transmitted is infections. infections. They are more likely to, in those age groups. Okay? And these also have um, effects on reproduction. Wow. Even when it's treated? Well, when it's treated and it's good, fine. Mm -hmm. But when it is recurrent, then it's going to cause a lot of damages. M a man who has one STI, is treated and is good within a short time, no problem. But when you have recurrent infections, mm -hmm. it can cause a whole gamut of problems to the reproductive system. And that will now cause infertility. And you know when it happens, they won't tell us the truth too. When a girl cannot conceive, they will say it's a, it's a woman. Yeah, you know, it's generally, um, the general thinking of the average African mm -hmm. is that the man is viral in as much as he's able to, you know, visit the other room and do well uh, without getting to understand the underlying factors. I've only seen my body like the car. Um, everything around me, I use everything around me to kind of replace. If you are cast out over eating, and you don't take care of it on time, you lose your gasket, you gradually begin to lose your engine. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. The same thing with hypertension. The same thing with other factors. The, the, the kidney, the, like what doctor said, now it's really, I didn't get to understand it that the, once your kidney fails, that's the end of it, you know. So what are we doing to ensure that the kidney does not fail? What is our lifestyle? You have to say 40 below. I've had to worry. No, there are 35 that are dying now, falling down. Hypertension. Dying because the food we eat, high salt content, is killing us gradually. But we don't know. Um, I stopped using Maggi for the past seven years. What's my that? Maggi seasoning. Uh, seasoning. Yeah, okay. sodium yeah, sodium yeah, sodium For the past seven years, in my cooking, it's not there. You know, because I noticed, I read, and I read that oh, this thing damages certain factors in your body. So, why do we have it in our food? We go to public places and we eat fast food like crazy. So. If we do the right thing, it will have less to worry about. Um, we are supposed to live long, yes, but at the same time, we can also live short without getting the right We're thing. Supposed so to it's, not the main, it's not the main problem. It's also like an African thing. The man is told to be like, to be like a strong man. Even when he's dying, your, your blood pressure is so high, you say, like, I'm fine. You know, because don't appear weak. I'll, don't I'll, appear weak. I'm That's why the guy <laughs> is here. That's why the men go just drop. He wakes up in the morning, he's trying to brush it and it's gone. But what did I, I think I read somewhere that statistically, married men live longer than married women because the women move, push their husbands to go for medical checkups and neglect themselves. I beg to differ. <laughs> I, I beg to differ. <laughs> If you check, if you check, so, check, check, I, think, I need to be sure if we need to do that research again or we need to ask the public if the women actually push their men to go for <laughs> men and likely would push and them. Especially when or you get to the other room, you realize that the performance level is dropping. The firing is no longer as expected. You know, a guy tries to push his uh, throttle and he's not moving uh, you know, effectively. Then you want to be able to ask, you need to go into check up. But women live longer than men because women take care of themselves more than the men do. Well, yeah, actually, actually, actually for men, 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 that's a fact. No, no, but I actually, think women, women take care of themselves more than men. See, well, that's it, not just that women take care of themselves more mm -hmm. than men. The whole government of our system takes care of men, well, takes care of women, and neglects men. 
True. Dog, dog, how can you say that? Well, that was just simple. Jerry, yeah, Jerry, that's 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 no, then, because all the NGOs, though they are catering for the women, the women are there to collect and get back to their husbands. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> Lizzie, I didn't so know that the lawyer. I don't even want to go. I don't even want to go to a health system. What you hear all the time is maternal and child health. If you go to the streets of Abuja, let's not go far. Go and ask them, who is a urologist? Nobody will know. More than 80% of you have never heard of a urologist. Doctor, I would say 90 you because okay. it took my about age. Gynecologist. It took my adult age to yeah, know about the urologist. When my dad had to go through the knife with prostrates, yes. you know, then I knew. It, that's what I knew. If not, I wouldn't even know about it. I said, then I read to know what it requires, how to be able to prevent similar things that happened to him. Exactly. You know, so I don't get through. So I, oh, you have to do this. So I started doing those things to ensure that the pipe is always free, not get those, uh, uh, you know, benign, you know, uh, growth. Doctor, uh, I think why they don't know urologists as much as gynos is because gynos actually are in charge of, you know, reproduction, bringing the child, you know, to life. So pregnancy. We'll, we'll, we'll no, I'm coming. So that's yeah, I'm coming. So that's. <laughs> but the urologist is not really doing much of that. Okay. You, probably yeah. that's what you, say. Say, that's you know, I will, you just took the word off my mouth. You know what? Mm -mm. Because most of the men who are infertile, they, they, they always take them to the gynecologist. It is yeah. somewhere along the line. The you gynecologist so you recommend to the urologist. You understand? Because if it's not selfish, <laughs> because some of them will keep you. Because so maybe there's even this maybe infertility situation. It's a problem of the urologist, no, not no. the gynecologist. Dog. But but let me let me also tell you why that is so important. Mm. In the eighties, when we were in medical school, we were told that male factor infertility was thirty percent. Today, male factor infertility is forty to fifty percent. So we see an infertile couple. Everybody say, ah, ah, oh boy, you be like saying, man, you go marry you. Mm. Eh? And they do not know that the man the, he is, is the 50% of the time, mm. the man is actually the one who is responsible for this situation. So you will better begin to think again to make sure you take care of the man properly. Come because properly. otherwise, you will, when the men are not properly taken, you are going to take the blame. <laughs> In most <laughs> cases, they refer you to the gynecologist. Yes. I remember mm -hmm. when back then, uh, being married, uh, and the baby wasn't coming in. The first we would go and see a gynecologist. Yes. So we went to see a gynecologist, you know, talk, and say, okay, we have to do this, I have to do that. I was not referred to a rheologist. Oh. This was like 2005, 2006. I was not referred to a rheologist. You can imagine at this, as early as 2006, I was referred to a gynecologist. He took his time, talked about if it is something's going to be done. He never said, okay, go oh, see a urologist. Because, you know, the markets, the profit is what he will be looking at. To re keep it there, maybe from time to time. Because, I mean, as a, a, any medical doctor has, you know, comes some kind of uh, peripheral knowledge about every other thing. Mm. So he gives you one or two suggestions to go about. But, you know, ask me to go and see a urologist. Okay, go and be sure if your pipe is clear. Let the man who is responsible we'll understand the dynamics. You know, if I meant to look at you, um, you know, profile solution. You know what I referred? Mm -hmm. He just, okay, after much, they we took grace and all of that. Started doing another factor. The baby started coming in. Oh, we now realize, okay, it wasn't necessarily this factor. It was this other factor. You know, all so right, but my question now is, doctor, you're talking about uh, taking care of uh, the men. We helping the men take care of themselves. I, I don't want to go into that argument <laughs> because I know that I'll win. But then, <laughs> let's, let's go generally. <laughs> Well, let's, let's well, go generally. I'm happy that we can take a vote here. <laughs> two men, two men, we'll see. I will pinch him, he will stay at the rest. Well, you know, the man is the head, the woman is the neck. Right. So we can always turn you around. Yeah. Yeah. I said I'll win. Exactly. But all the same, talking about taking care of ourselves, I, I want you to go into that for us. But quickly, somebody asked us a question that I want to take. 
you know, this week, and I clearly remember it, said that um, she would like to know, I don't know if he's a he or she, but he would like to know the difference between PID, because we mentioned it last week, and UTI, and I think PID is pelvic. Inflammatory disease. That means it's feminine. Mm. It's not masculine. So the UIT, I don't UTI, know what you, you know. UTI. 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 Okay, UTI. UTI. Urinary tract infection. infection. Okay. Now, when you're talking about urinary tract infection, it's specific. You're talking about infection that involves the kidneys, the ureters, the bladder, the urethra. Okay? Now, these are purely urinary system. But when you're not talking of PIV, you are not beginning to involve the reproductive the organs, organs in the female pelvis. Oh, okay. The womb. Oh, okay. The tubes. Okay? So you're not talking that the whole of that area is affected, affected. by the infection. So, sorry, what is the PIV? What is the PID? Pelvic, pelvic inflammatory, inflammatory disease. disease. Oh, you wouldn't know. Okay. You don't have pelvic. Sorry. What? <laughs> He but has you don't. pelvis, but he doesn't have the because these are pelvis. I, 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 I don't want to have the slides. What do you use it for? Uh, Cytica. This, this, this is the pelvis. This is the pelvis. Yeah. This is the pelvis. This is the one that carries you. That carries that. Uh, carries you. Mm. Okay. The pelvic ghetto. Okay. okay. But we're well, not being more specific to the of the inflammation in the female reproductive organ. Okay. When we're talking about PID, we're talking about the inflammation involves the female reproductive organ, not just urinary tract infection. All right, so the the urinary tract infection are the organs like kidney... The, 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 the urinary the organs, which will be that kidney, excretes. ureter, bladder, and the urethra. Does it also, got, does, it, does it also involve the scrotum area as it relates to... Uh, the sperm and all of that. No, no, no. For for the man, when a, when a man has, um, a, 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 um, usually we're not talking about um, infection affecting those areas. Are often sexually transmitted, but they may not be. They may just, but they are. Yes, they are also can be a, okay. a affectation of the male Doctor, reproduction. I want to know. I know that um, when we had the interviews with the men, some people suggested three months, three times a year. You said once. At least. At, at, least, least, at least, least once. once. Sorry. Mm. But is there any symptom that a man can have that would prompt him to, you know, that the wife can say, oh, you need to Go visit. Check, check Apart, like he mentioned, he said, oh, the throttle and, <laughs> and all of that. <laughs> the, the strength is not there. But what are the immediate are signs? Greek, in, Greek, Greek words. But I don't know what is throttle. <laughs> oh, you don't know, but you're going to demonstrate no, this, yeah. <laughs> he, he, he mentioned it. I'm, I'm, I'm borrowing his words. Okay, okay. I, I, I think that, you see, if you are in the same room with your husband, mm -hmm. and you find out that this man who will sleep and snore through the night, mm. every few minutes he's waking up to go to the bathroom. Okay. I will spend some time there before he comes back. Soon after, he's going back again. Are you not going to be worried? Definitely. You're going to be worried. worried. Mm -hmm. sure. Where is this man waking up several times to go and urinate? Is he got a big phone call? The uh, first thing is suspicious. Uh, because suspicious. I was thinking yeah. he's has he phone Has he got an infection? <coughs> Excuse me. Well, if, he, if you now, as you say, uh, that he wakes up to urinate very often, you're not beginning to wonder. Where is, what is the cause of this? Now, let me begin to think like a doctor. Mm -hmm. Would he have diabetes? Yeah, I was going to say that. Would he have prostate enlargement? Okay? If he goes and he stays there for a long time, uh, and he comes back and runs back again, is he having an obstruction to his urine flow? You call it Gonic. urine incontinence? No, something. no, no. Incontinence is when you can't control it. Okay. okay. Now, so when you have that, it could be, if it has a bladder outlet obstruction, as we now call it, it could be an enlarged prostate. Mm -hmm. It could be stone in the bladder. It could be a narrowing of the outlet for urine, the urethra. It's it could be a number of things. So the point to make is that you can notice abnormal behavior, like to answer your question. Mm -hmm. Then you will now say, why don't you go and check yourself? Because there must be something wrong. But Doc, there's a challenge, you know, with the kind of society we live in and how uh, ineffective we communicate within our, with, with our spouses. If the man starts going out to have that experience that you just mentioned, the first thing that comes to mind is not even his health. It's suspicious that he's talking to someone on phone. 
<laughs> or it's going to it's going to come in. That's the first that comes to mind. Mm. And so when the man begins to say this is so it's important we all get knowledge. Primary knowledge. You know, you said something from the beginning, you said, is it the fault of the doctors not educating the public very well? And that's the truth. What is, what are we doing in our primary health system in terms of primary education? Health education rather. Are we really teaching those basic things that people need to know so that they see those signs, they can easily raise their alarm, escalate it? And then yeah. I saw you waking up frequently to go to that. Is there anything wrong? Is it even if, if what, what if a woman does not even, you know, notices, yeah. she does not notice that the husband is waking up because she too is fast Maybe. asleep. Yeah. You know, Possibly. some men, they are married. They love their wives. Either because they are being too protective, they have issues, they don't want to discuss it. Sometimes so they shame. notice, it, maybe it could be from shame. I don't know. I, I know a couple that had prostate issue, and the man refused to talk about it until it was almost late. So it, I, I don't think it's the right thing. Because if you share it with your wife, she will instantly begin to look for help for That's you. That's why I said ineffective communication. Mm. If you tell your wife something, that affects you and it was not received very well. Mm. You won't do it. You won't bother. Or you, 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 you decide to be vulnerable, mm. right? And the next thing, a, a little quarrel or something is used against you. Wow. Right? Wow, that's so really the We are not mean up. like that. That's really mean. You know, another question I want to is ask what, is, is, what you say is, is, is quite practical. Uh, I, 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 think it's, I think it's important. Um, communication is is so so important knowledge and then communication, communication yeah. and then also proper use of that information i mean like you 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 said because see one of the problem of being a man is that even when you are dying you don't want to be vulnerable at all yeah. because true. of the environment you live in the acceptance of that vulnerability and the help you get yeah. imagine you're told uh you touch her at night and she says just you disturb me now, just after one minute now, you'll get out of this place. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then anyway, there are underlying issues resulting to that factor. Exactly. And you're trying to want to communicate that, but she does not want to show empathy. So keep that type of ways is understanding that empathy is a very key component to allow your partner to be able to open up to you. Yeah. And once you do it, once you show empathy, you don't use the same issue as a reference point of discussion. Because if not, next time you won't get that person to communicate again. I, I, I engage a lot of men, dog. You know, we have this forum, I have a men forum where we talk a lot of issues. And some of the things you get, the feedback you get, some of them can't even say when they have these things. Some suffer in silence, find different things, look for support system to jumpstart the system, uh, look for drugs. And I say, look, you don't take drugs to jumpstart your system. There are natural processes you can actually do to help you. I, I've had experience where, you know, I thought I, thought I was jazz or kind of sham. Because in the morning, I wasn't getting my money perform, you know, action, you know, in the morning. You're supposed to. And uh, when you get to the other room, you're, you're like praying to like allow Lazarus to resurrect. And, but this was a psychological issue. You sure have the NTA language. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, some of the factors that can maybe make um, a woman say, oh, you need to go and see doctor. So when a man has a smoking um, is, a, is a smoker and drinks um, maybe without even having symptoms or anything do you think it is okay for because we are at a point in our life where everybody's trans acceptance so sometimes you <laughs> you, you don't have to judge people you just have to accept that okay this is this is this this is that you know as far as you're not trying to influence me but for a wife thinking about like look I want to live long with you do you just tell your husband, okay, because you smoke and you drink, go on, straight to the up. hospital. Let's see what you Well, what if you do, do you it to me with your hand like that, I will not do that. Oh, wow. Uncle, leave this thing because... No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. There's a relationship you have with your spouse that it can be... No, no, no. Like that the same way. No. I know, I always say like this. I will just say, you know, you need to... I mean, the diplomacy will come. Uh, but what you However, it's coming from a place of genuine reaction. concern. And you see, we reacted the same so. way. No, but what if it's coming from a place of... Maybe okay, they, I, I, I think happens. generally, the doctor is trying to tell us that whatever you do, the men remain the head. But then the head cannot move without the neck. We have no so they need that. pampering. Uh, you can't even pampering. turn them. The men need pampering to get things done. You know, you know? You know if, you, if, you, if you tell me that because you smoke and you drink, go and see the doctor, I'm going to find what to tell you. 
the same reason why you should go and see the doctor. Ah, sir. So Help let, us. Let, meet let, us. Let, 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 let me tell you. Let me Let me explain to you because you can achieve the same thing yeah. without uh, abusing that. Like, for example, smokers have early morning cough. Yeah. They have the smokers cough. You have it in mind to the time to go and see the doctor. Then you, at this period, you find that this cough has increased. So then I think we should go and see a doctor. This your cough is increasing. I know you usually have a smoker's cough, but this one is a bit more. Let's go and see the doctor. It sounds better. They are going to achieve the same thing. Okay. But in that case, what kind of, is it your type of doctor or what? Is it no, a general no, practitioner? No, you are not going to be seeing a chest physician. You see a general physician who will refer you to a chest physician. Doc, how about, you know, uh, the same scenario and uh, the cough is coming and she comes like, ah, this is the cough like this. What do you go? We go kiss. Why are you thinking about the rest of the rest of the you know, because you see, the human being really practical. I'm telling you what, the man, right? The man is, um, for every resistance, for every, right, for every authority, there is resistance. Whenever there is an authority, and the man is wired in such a way that he's not ready to koto to any authority, even general human beings as mm. a woman to do the same thing. So, suggestive reasoning, oftentimes it's the best approach, and sometimes comically. You say, I will go kiss. You say, nobody. It's the cough condition. Say, ah, this your cough is increasing. Or it's persistent. Don't you think we should go see a doctor? Mm -hmm. Don't even mention the cigarette thing. Because when you mention it, he's going to resist it. Mm -hmm. Tell you you're trying to use that as a basis to want to go and ask to do something. So when you do that, it helps. We need to find ways with which to meet our partners in a language that makes it subtle. Subtle, yes. And not necessarily being authoritative or over them. Because if you do that, every, it least even your child. A boy, tell yeah. the boy to resist. go pick that. He doesn't go say, my sweetheart, go and get me that, this thing. You'll see the difference. He will smile. He will smile and go and do it. Because yeah, you have true. used the language. The true. man is a king. Understand that. He's a king. Let's but do base kinship for now. And uh, some people are writing into to us. Let's uh, <laughs> quickly take some of our messages. <laughs> Doctor, <laughs> I know that they say water is good, but I don't like drinking water. Hmm. Would this affect me or my organs? Of course. Um... I, I like people who don't want to drink water. So I want to encourage them to work hard in the sun so that they can <laughs> fall to these goals and come to me. So you <laughs> can make money. So you can make some money. Because they fall out, perhaps. <laughs> like the guy, the casket maker, who is always praying for a for a year. So uh, I think it's important that we understand for a child about 70% of that child's body it's water. is water. For you, about 60%, in fact, 70 to 80% of the child is water. 60 to 80% of me and you is water. So you need to drink water. Okay. And you're always losing water. Yeah, sweat. It's good for you sweat and all that. Um, well, I mentioned kidney stone as a joke, but it's a serious matter. As we are seated here, everything you need in your body to form kidney stone is there. Hmm. Wow. It's there in your unit, it is all there. All you need to do is to get more dehydrated or get an infection that affects the, the kidneys and then it will form a nidus for crystallization. Wow. Okay? So the first thing we tell a patient who has a tendency to drink plenty of water. And water is good for your body. Hmm. Everything, that's, everything that functions in your body requires water. Drink water. Don't take two to three liters for an adult is good. Two to three liters a, a day. day. Only. A, a day. day. So we can we can do more than that. Well, if, if you have skin stone, I'll tell you to do more than that. But two Wouldn't there be water? Because water. I've, seen, I've, seen, I've yeah, seen these people who say, oh. Day, no, right? that is also something we need to interview. Because people tell me, oh, when I wake up in the morning, I take 1.5 liters of water. I'm doing water therapy. Fantastic. However, Living, we want you to have a person. continuous urine Drinking. flow throughout the okay. day. We need you to, your kidney needs to be functioning, hydrated throughout the day. So you have enough liquid to work with. You take 1.5 liter in the morning, then you take at night. You've left yourself for 12 hours without adequate hydration. So you just have to break I'll, I'll it down. Because break I wake up in the morning, first thing I do is like um, maybe 100 cl mm. of water. 
Now that helps my boy system and all of exactly. those things. But I also realize that once I do that, I don't hang around. Uh, my uh, urine, uh, urine uh, frequency is yeah. in the first early hours of the morning increases. Yeah. Now over this, over time, I've also learned that you don't just just go water like that. You drink water when you need water because the kidney needs water. It's like the grinding machine. If what there's no water in your grinding machine, mm. you notice that it ceases from you know it, it starts gritty. It starts mm. creating and all of those things. So what we need the water to be able to do that. So now the question I want to ask Doc is this. As a man um, in my 50s, how frequently do I need to drink water? And also, in drinking water, what are the other things I need to take to help, like you talked about, give the kidney phase, I mean, that's the end, mm. to help the kidney? Because I know that there's a connecting relationship between the kidney and the urethra. Once the kidney starts failing, the performance also start feeling the other room. I'm very important. I'm very cute with that because this is the age where we need more of those. You know. I, I, I think <laughs> it, the way it's important to note, like I said, you need to, like you say, two to three liters. In fact, most people will do with two liters a day. But it's not you take it in the morning and forget. Take a continuous flow throughout the day so that you you have. Uh, but there's the, the 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 body is such a fantastic machine. There's something called the test mechanism. It senses when you need water and creates the desire to drink water mm -hmm. in you. Hmm. It's telling you, the body is telling you, I need water. I need water. Give me water. But a lot of people who don't like to drink water will now be taking Coca-Cola, beer. Yeah, because I was going to ask. You, know, you, see, you see, because... Can we replace that? It, it, it really can't replace it because if you are really thirsty, you will take all that you still need to take water. Okay. Because, and, and also, remember that um, the, the, when you take those stuff, mm. your body is going to take the water from it and Leave those it ones right. will either go out or depending on what maybe you... I start from it out inside. You, you, you store some of them. Calories. When you don't need. No. I, I, I was just watching a program yesterday. I say a bottle of Sprite. The one I brought, not the Nigerian one that is much sweeter, mm -hmm. had 14 cubes of sugar. So imagine somebody who takes five bottles of Sprite a day. A day. That's a no-no. Okay, can I replace my water, you know, with um, um, coffee? Because I boil the water, add some coffee or tea. Because <laughs> people boil add the water things and now add. into water. Can I replace you it? Yeah, some let me, stuff let me see, you know, that, oh, it's vitamins. When we take, and when we take other look at our, our sort of water, uh, thinking, okay, it's in the place of water. Mm -hmm. What it does is that you are, you give more work to the kidneys. Exactly. You know, uh, to start to separate the, them. To separate them. Now, the mm -hmm. kidney that is supposed to be doing that function now is not busy trying to clean this system because the kidney is the, clean, the cleanser. It's not trying to clean your water. It's like you go fetch dirty water from the stream mm -hmm. and you come back home and you put a uh, water purifier. Before mm -hmm. that water purifies for you to drink, you know what happens? Now you need to increase the pH level. So those are the things that, so you, why do you now suffer the kidney from doing this other work that it's not supposed to be doing than expect it to do? So, Doc. But you know that, um, when you come to coffee, you are craving cafe, you are not looking for water. That is the truth. Because sort of drug taking. <laughs> when you for those of us who like coffee, you know it's, a, it's actually the coffee you want, not the water. Exactly. And we need to differentiate between that. You can't use coffee to replace water. How much coffee can you drink anyway? For you to get enough because you take Two liters of coffee a day. What I do again is I get my bottle of water. You know, usually I have this two liter you know, uh, jerry can that I carry around. I put a bit of uh, water, uh, cucumber, sometimes a drop of vitamin C. Crystallize. You know, and let it to sit. flavor the water. Yes, because oh, water is not sweet. Sugar, no. sugar coated. Sometimes water. lemon. You know, put a little, little bit of it. So I don't feel like I'm what, taking straight what, up water. What, whatever you do, don't take the kind of sugar you're taking in sprites. Okay. Because, no, I don't push sugar. Because what, what about what? this? Now I'm looking at this bottle here, and I'm like, this is poison, kind of. This but is. This it doesn't have any wrapper the, around it. So she it doesn't have any wrapper. That's yeah. fine. So we can talk about it. Mm -hmm. And nobody say we are demarketing mm -hmm. them. Because <laughs> the truth of the matter is this, 
as you get older, mm -hmm. you really need to cut down the, the amount sugar of content. sugar you're taking. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you have an organ called the pancreas, okay. which is responsible for producing insulin, insulin yeah. which is responsible for processing sugar. From disaccharides. You know? <laughs> <laughs> now, now you, you, you find out that you're fine, you're not diabetic. Okay. But you start taking a lot of this and then you become diabetic. What has happened? Yes, you have, you have exhausted the bitter cells of the pancreas. Mm. So uh, in your, at a certain age in life, you exhaust the bitter... Uh, no, no, what we're saying, because okay. of the it's load of sugar, sugar you're giving load. you. Oh, okay. And if you have the genetic predisposition or the tendency to become diabetic, you're going to go to the state that you're going to exhaust those cells. They will no longer be able to cope Reproduce. with the amount of sugar you're giving to them. Then the patient has what we call adult onset diabetes. Adult consent. Adult onset. Adult onset. Okay. 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 So, so I, I think it's important we are careful what we put into our body. Mm. And when, when the way you begin to put on a lot of weight, especially, you see, one of the things about weight gain is that you get lazy about doing anything about it until it becomes to give you knee pain. I'm talking about myself now. Mm. So, <laughs> okay? Because so you then you the begin weight. to walk to lose weight. Now, there's a lot of problem with that, with gaining weight. Number one, I want to, what I want to put as number one now is that apart from the risk of diabetes, you are giving a lot of load to your heart to work. Hypertension, predisposition to when the load becomes too much for the heart to carry, heart failure. You are predisposed to um, most cancers. Anyone you have a tendency for, it begins to have a higher tendency to manifest. Because it, when you check most studies, they're going to tell you there's a relationship between obesity and Cancer. various cancers. So, uh, but, so it becomes important for us to begin to make an effort to do it. And, and we don't need too much effort. The problem is that we need to get up and start working. Mental. It, it, it start from here. So if you can do like 30 minutes of walking, you don't even have to run a day on a regular basis and control what we eat. In fact, for the ad average adult to lose weight, you have to take in less than 2,000 calories a, a day. day. Less than 2,000 calories. That doesn't, that's a, that's a, a, a rap of founded here, man. A good system. That's a study that I actually started deploying, which is rationing what I need to eat. Yeah. Because I I, I was just saying, I'm going to eat this much. Yeah. 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 Because you know the jodenum happens you to the be stomach. the stomach, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, happens to be the warehouse of all bacteria. And if that place is healthy, then it means your body can also be healthy. So what I started doing is to reduce the ration, so I don't feel bloated mm -hmm. for time. Now, in my not feeling bloated, I don't get overly, you know, overweight, you know, because of that. So I recently I checked my weight. I realized I'm like 189, you know, a kg. I'm like, this is even much. I need to reduce further. So I started cutting down on what I eat and reducing uh, my food pattern in the, in, the, in the night mostly. Because they, they say you have about four hours for digestion, if I'm not... If I'm, yeah, five, yeah. yeah, four or five hours mm -hmm. of digestion. So what am I eating before going to bed so that that can digest you know, uh, before I wake okay, up in the morning, morning so that I can have a good bowel system. So I, I, I want an institution where you can actually tell us more about this because this is mostly for men. Uh, women always have different ways with this because they do a lot of activities. They're very busy, so they can burn some calories along the road. Yeah, but the problem is uh, being busy depends on how busy you are. Do you actually burn in calories when you are busy? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> depends on how busy you are. We can be busy so pressing our phones. <laughs> to add what he's asking, right? <laughs> You know, with this, the era of social media and awareness and wokeness, you have a lot of people who come to give advice. And because people are so 
engulfed with social media they take um, some advices literally so i recently read about scent leaf um someone was doing a whole analysis on scent leaf and how it helps with ulcer cleansing, mm. cleansing for diabetes mm. cleansing for this like the person uh, gave a whole so what i did was i i, I called Once i i, I, I sent it to a doctor friend of mine i said tell me your opinion on this and he said you see the person did not even give you the measurements, the portion, the n nothing to take. So they say, go and boil lugu. You buy some naira, I'll be sent leave. You buy some naira own and start drinking. You don't know you can get into shock or something. So when they give advice like that, oftentimes there is no proper direction on how to go. So I don't know if... My, my answer to that usually is that I'm not an alternative medicine practitioner. <laughs> so I really don't have an answer for you. So what I, I always tell people is this, like the doctor said to you. Mm -hmm. My own grandfather was very good with herbs. Mm -hmm. In fact, I wanted to study pharmacy, mm -hmm. not medicine. But somehow I got into medicine. There's a lot that is good in our herbs. But we need to have a dosage. We need to have proper preparation because if you have 10 different hair prepared in the, of the same day, their concentrations are and different. Difference. We need to have their concentration. Then you'll be able to do dosage. Study. You have to do toxicity studies because they tell you, no, it's herbal, therefore there's no problem. It's not true. So I'm very wary of those things. I remember there's this Zobo. Yeah. A, a, a relation of mine first tested it in uh, Sudan. And he told you it's very good for hypertension. He dropped his antihypertensives. I was taking that. By the time he came back, the blood pressure was hitting the roof. Sure. Does it mean that it's not effective? It I don't know. Don't However, the, he, we started taking it because he didn't don't want to take these chemicals called drugs. You want to take something natural. I, th I think we must be careful. Like I say, I'm not the expert in that. But I do know that it is important that if you're going to take those things in place of your medication, you must make sure that you have a proper dosage. You have to have the toxicity studies. So you make sure that you are safe. Okay, doctor. Uh, you know, uh, you mentioned Zebu. I, I quickly remember my own... Um, mm -hmm experience i like the taste in my mouth i like the smell i like everything about mm. it but each time i take it my system is disorganized for you know very long time with sugar, you know, they said, sugar. I, I don't put anything it's just the zobo boiled with um, honey that's all mm. so and ordinarily well, i take something now I, I, no the honey, honey. i don't honey. react to honey <laughs> if i put honey. the honey in my maybe uh, tea or whatever i don't react but once it's inside zobo I react to it. Yeah, yeah, react to the it. Zobo. So the it is, is the that Zobo that is the problem? No, no. No, it's no. not the Zobo. What is the product that comes from combination of Zobo and honey? Have you thought of that? That's the thing. So because, you, the reaction, reaction. Because, because if you put sugar, you will not get the same effect. No, no, I, I don't. I don't like sugar, so I've never really tried. <laughs> it's, 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 it's too bitter. So, so it's, it's don't, don't we have to go? And uh, there are messages here. I guess we'll have to reply them off air. But then, um, uh, on the parting notes, I need you to just say one thing for Nigerians to keep themselves clean. It's important. Well, I, I, I think it's important that you have a regular health check, like I said, at least once a year. And what checks that will be done for you will depend on your age. For example, if you're a man and you're 40 years and above, whatever check they do for you, I will encourage you to include an assessment of your prostate. Because that's under, if prostate cancer is under silent killer in our country. All right. But whatever it is, please do your blood pressure blood and check pressure. your blood sugar. Check. Okay. And Abong, what are you going to be doing yes. for your husband? So. It's okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> that one is in trouble. <laughs> Uh, what are you going to ask him to do that? So, uh, honestly, I'm thinking, I would, I would like he said, uh, you have to be a little gentle 
but I'm hoping that I can be gentle enough to tell him to go for medical checks by tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> because um, since we got married, I've been the one going for medical checks. Um, I have done unbelievable and painful medical checks, and he doesn't. He doesn't. So okay. it's more like let's i mean let's be equal let's doctor so you want to be it's not vengeance it's not vengeance let's 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 just be you know let's just be seen that we are both healthy we are about to live okay. long and okay. you know, yeah. kevin you're passing what yeah part of what i think uh people should learn to be more uh, go for more plant-based meals because i've seen that work you know magic in my system um, I had one month, you know, just plant-based meal. No uh, animal protein in my food. Um, all of those things were just plant-based. And I saw the magic it did in my the system. So, okay. so plant-based meal will help because most of the drug we think we're going to go get are also plant-based right. uh, extraction. So if we go buy a plant-based meal, then we can help Not our so system. Well. Yeah. I thank you very much. It's been another wonderful one hour. And um, I'll just leave you with the words. Whatever you do, take care of yourself because there's no another you and you're important to us conversations. Let's look forward to seeing you again next week. And love yourself, share yourself love. Ciao, ciao.